Hi there, this is Dr. Anna Maria Help here with Basmati.com, and this week I'm going to talk about California poppy, an absolutely stunning wildflower that's blooming like crazy right now, actually, in parts of California and all over Arizona. In fact, on my drive back from Tucson several weeks ago, the hills and mountainsides were absolutely covered with it. Absolutely gorgeous. And it is also found up in Oregon as well. Uh, so kind of all over the West Coast, down in the Arizona. I can actually grow it here in Durango at 6,500 feet. It's a very easy to grow plant. Um, and it is very plentiful in the wild where it grows. But what I've read is that in California, at least, it's not legal to harvest it because it's the state flower. Um, not that it's rare there, it's not rare, but because it's the state flower, you're not supposed to dig it in California. But no worries, it's actually really easy to grow. And you can even buy the dried herb uh, uh, from several reputable online sources. Although I like fresh herb extract, the best dry herb also does work. Now, uh, so beautiful, beautiful yellow to orange flowers. Uh, the herbalist Michael Moore actually recommended harvesting the more orange ones. And in fact, you, you actually harvest, if you're, if you're gathering this for yourself, um, you harvest the whole plant with California poppy. You can actually just throw the whole thing into your jar for extract making. The roots, the seeds, the flowers, the leaves, the stem, uh, the whole thing. And it gets a bad reputation in terms of taste and such. I kind of like it. I, you know, I'm weird admittedly, but I actually really like it and I like the smell of it as well. Now, California poppy, the botanical name is a bit of a tongue twister. I can't even say it. Um, I will spell it for you. It's E-S-C-H-S-C-H-O-L-T-Z-I-A. It's Goltzia californica. Uh, the second is C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-C-A. -I 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 so it's a heck of a botanical name for whatever reason. Um, and it is in the poppy family. Uh, and so let me just make some clarifications around that. Though this is related to opium poppy, California poppy does not contain alkaloids. Uh, or I'm sorry, it contains alkaloids. It does not contain opioids. And so opioids are what make opium poppy what it is. And so California poppy's chemistry is different. It has a different set of alkaloids. And it's a much gentler plant. Uh, it's, you, it's not heroin. It's not opium. And nor can you produce any of those things from California poppy. So if you're getting excited like, ooh, I'm going to start selling some California poppy, uh-uh. It's not the same plant as opium poppy, despite the fact that they are relatives. Now, with that said, the er late herbalist, late great herbalist Michael Moore cautioned that the structure of some of the alkaloid chemicals in California poppy might, at least theoretically, trigger a positive urine test for opiates. But again, they're very different plants with different chemistry. And despite that possibility and um, they're not the same. So I just want to point that out. Um, and so California poppy, probably one of its more common uses, traditionally speaking, is for insomnia. And so it's especially useful if pain is keeping you up at night. Um, and it may be helpful if you start taking it before bedtime to help ease you to sleep. It's also especially useful for people that wake up in the middle of the night. You maybe wake up and have a little bit of a freak out, which is something I often do. Some of us kind of wake up in the middle of the night with a little anxiety. And so that's where California poppy can really shine. And it does work well in combination and formula with other herbs as well. Um, and so uh, also with California poppy, if you, you can get a little grogged out if you take too much of it, but it is, uh, as far as we know from traditional use, a pretty darn safe plant. Um, now, so insomnia is a big one uh, for its use. It's also used for just kind of day-to-day -day tension, agitation, or anxiety, and you don't really need much for that during the day. Um, honestly, just a, you know a few drops, five drops, 10 drops, of a liquid extract of the plant uh, that you may make or buy should do it during the day without making you drowsy. But even if you're using a higher dose, 
at night for sleep, it's not going to just knock you out, right? It's not um, that strong of an herb. It might make you drowsy. It might relax you a little bit, but it's not like a sleep drug where it knocks you completely out. But that said, whenever you're starting on any kind of relaxing, more sedating herb, uh, you know, test it out before you get into the car and drive anywhere. Just see how you yourself respond to it. And because it is a calming, relaxing herb, and one that may be helpful for sleep, you don't actually want to combine it with any sedative medications. And in fact, it doesn't really make sense to take a sedative herb with a sedative drug unless you're working with an herbalist and a doctor to reduce your drug dosage and then you're being carefully monitored, right? Otherwise, it doesn't really make sense at all to combine them, yeah? Now, um, some other uses in terms of California poppy. It has been used in children for bedwetting. I've never tried it for that in my practice, but that is one of the uses out there. Um, and it's also commonly used amongst herbalists for pain. Now, a higher dose is often used if you make your own plant extract in a jar with some vodka or whatever, it's a half teaspoon to a teaspoon roughly, depending on your body size as a dose. And you don't want to maybe operate heavy machinery and things like that or go for a drive after that dose just in case you are more sensitive to its relaxing effects. But that, uh, it, it, it is a higher dose for pain. And again, as I said, if pain is what's keeping you up at night, this might be a good herbal ally for you. And so cow poppy may help with nerve pain. Neuralgia is the technical term for that. Or muscle pain that's going on, you know, skeletal muscle pain crampiness, whether it's stomach cramps or menstrual cramps, it may be useful for that as well. Um, painful joints as well. And so uh, pretty broadly active and absolutely beautiful herb. And so let's see, uh, one of my teachers actually used to make cookies with the California poppy seeds for her kids on car trips. Now, some herbalists will say use with caution in children. I've not used this for kids. I've only used it in adults. So some herbalists will say use with caution for kids because there's not enough known. Other herbalists, you know, like I said, gave their kids cookies on car trips just to kind of chill them out. And so the indication there was that, you know, their kids were either hyperactive or spazzing out in the car or getting really annoying and poking at each other and such. And so they would use California poppy seed cookies for that. Um, and, you know, if you have children and you're like, hmm, just do a little bit more research into the, uh, the plant. If there's a local herbalist, talk to them and get their two cents on it. And, you know, even if you're not going to use this plant medicinally, it's, it's really beautiful. And depending on where you live, it's quite easy to grow. As I said, even where I am at 6,500 feet, I, actually, I lived at 7,200 feet elevation when I was growing California poppy in my garden and it would come back the next year and it even spread in almost solid clay soil at high elevation with a real winter. So very easy to grow and a really pretty one to have even just in an ornamental garden. But California poppy, uh, read more about it and get to know it. Take a look at it. Until next time, be well.